MSX. This system was was around when the following co computers, Commodore, Amstrad, and Sinclair Spectrum, were around. It was quite a popular system. First, let's show you what what was it? Oh, bollocks! Pause that. Put that up. One of the most popular systems in the 80s was was by American across Japan, which were released in Japan, the Middle East, Europe, and Brazil. Now, this computer, people, some people don't realise. The MSX computer was a standardised home computer architecture. In the 1980s, this computer was conceived by, excuse how I pronounce this, Kazuhiko Nishi, the then Vice President at Microsoft Japan, and Director of the ASCII Corporation. One thing is to, to note about this particular computer is, this particular home computer, it was Microsoft's first dip. It was Microsoft's dip in the home computer pool. Bearing in mind, bearing in mind, in later video, in the later system of the Commodore One Hundred Twenty Eight, that was programmed by Microsoft. And obviously, that was when you switched the boot up screen on that, it would show up. It would say Microsoft. So this this going back to humble beginnings, MSX was a computer not made by one company. There was national manufacturer was Sony, Pioneer, Panasonic, Samsung, Sharp, Philips, Canon, Yamaha, Toshiba, Mitsubishi. And Hitachi and Casio. There's a lot of manufacturers, a lot of big names that made the syst made these systems. So there's, there's quite a multitude. The whole idea of, of that particular console, our, our Microsoft envisaged it, they wanted it to be compatible. So all of them branded names. You could say your friend had a Sony uh, MSX. And I had a Panasonic MSX. I could say to him, "Could I borrow your game? Plays on this Sony MSX, and I plug it in mine. It plays on mine, which, which is, which is, which was a good idea, because I think the only player of in my in my class had an MSX. It, there was only one, because at that time Amstrads were getting very popular, but." Anyway, despite Microsoft's involvement in involvement in the MSX-based machines, was seldom seen in the United States and Britain. And don't forget, it was Japanese-made, or he heavily, or although heavily advertised by Toshiba in the UK. So really, I think we only saw the Toshiba MSX. But they were popular in other markets. It's difficult to estimate how many MSX computers were sold worldwide. You're probably looking at you're probably looking at like some at least a quite a bit. You know what I mean? But eventually, five million MSX-based units were sold in Japan alone. Can you just imagine that in England or in America? Many of which were later models. This home computer was released in the J Japan, Middle East, Europe, and Brazil. This particular system was. Before the appearance of the great success of a Nintendo's family computer, MSX was a platform for which major 
Japanese game studios such as Konami and Hudson Soft produced their titles. The Metal Gear series was originally written for MSX hardware. That's a surprise, guys. On the 27th of June 1983, the date considered the birthday of the MSX standard, the MSX was formally announced during a press conference and a slew of big Japanese firms declared their plans to introduce machines. That's, you get you mention it is compatible, you can plug it into your friend's one who's got Sony, and do you know what I mean? That's a money maker. The Japanese companies avoided the intensely competitive US home computer market, which was uh, the throes of the Commodore led price war. Now, don't forget, Commodores were cheaper than, you know, I mean, they were the cheapest that were going at the time. Only Spectra Video and Yamaha briefly marketed the MSX machines. So two new, two other companies are in there, so it was quite a fast machine. Spectra Video's MSX enjoyed very little success, and Yamaha's C CX5M model, built to interface with various types of MIDI equipment, was billed more as a digital music tool than a standard personal computer. During the 1980s, Europe became the largest computer games as opposed to the console games marketed in the world, and the extremely popular Commodore 64, Atari 8 bit, and the Sinclair ZX Spectrum computers dominated. By the time the MSX launched in Europe, several more popular 8 bit home computers had also arrived, such as the Amstrad. You know, and, and, and quite a few more to be listed, obviously. But it was far too late to capture extremely crowded European 8-bit computer market. A problem for some game software developers was was a method by which MSX1 computers addressed their video RAM to draw a picture on the screen. It could be quite slow compared to systems that gave direct access to the video memory. This and the fact that completely different features of the MSX One's video chip using the MSX video access method had to compensate for the slow video access were not efficiently used while while porting mostly Spectrum software made the MSX One to appear slower when running games. There were some minor compatibility issues also plugged ported Spectrum games. For example, the Toshiba HX10 machine was unable to read certain key combinations at, at the same time, preventing the Spectrum standard of QAOP steering, whereas machines by other manufacturers worked fine. The evolution MSX spawned four generations. MSX1 1983, MSX2, 1986, MS, MSX2 Plus, 1988, and not forgetting the MSX Turbo R, 1990. The first three were 8-bit computers based on the, the Z80 microprocessor, while the MSX Turbo was based on the enhanced Zilog Z80, which that chip is also in the Amstrad systems. The CPC 6128, 664s, and 464s, and the, obviously the later spectrums produced by Amstrad. As the, R, as the R800, the MSX Turbo was introduced in 1990 but was unsuccessful due to the lack of support and the rise of popularity of the then well established IBM PC compatible market. Production of the Turbo R ended in 1993 when Panasonic decided to focus the release on of the then Panasonic 3DO, which was a console which will, which will be coming up in a later video. The MSX3 was scheduled for market in 1990, delays in development of its VDP, then named V9978, on the pre release spec sheets caused Yamaha to miss its time to market deadline. Which, that's a bit of a pity. The impact was 
that the MSX never became the worldwide standard that its makers had env envisioned, mainly because it never took off in the United States and the UK. However, in Japan, South Korea, Argentina and Brazil, MSX was paramount in the home computer system. Which, it was, it's such a pity, you know what I mean? It, bearing in mind, this was, what well, you got to remember, bearing in mind, this was the first ever system actually made by, with Bill Gates, the father of Microsoft, so that's, that's a good thing. People tend to forget that. And that's pretty much about it, guys. Thanks for watching.